Taking notes is one of the best habits a D&D player or dungeon master can practice. So today, we're going to talk about the benefits of taking notes during your session and the best method that players and DMs can use to take effective notes without it becoming a distraction from the game. Here we go. Hi, Bob here, and welcome to Bob World Builder, where we learn how to have more fun playing D&D together. So this topic, which really covers what I think is the best way to take notes for D&D players and DMs, stems from the video I did about improvising, and really about setting yourself up for successful improv during a session. That video, linked in the cards and down in the description, covers everything from fully scripting a session to going full blank slate, where you don't have anything prepped. And on that spectrum, what I find to be the sweet spot and what was requested to have an extended video by a lot of viewers like you is this method, which I have dubbed the scatter plot. If you're familiar at all with the concept of mind mapping, you already know what I'm talking about. Basically just dumping your thoughts onto a page, starting kind of sporadically and eventually linking some things together, but not being too cautious to try to make it all make sense. The idea is to get your thoughts flowing. That's how creativity really works, and that's the strategy I've been using for these videos since that one about improv. But unlike what I'm doing here, working off a bulleted list of points to go through over the course of this video, the scatter plot follows a different method. Like an actual scatter plot graph, this method relies on a series of points. But instead of mathematical points or coordinates being plotted onto that graph, you're literally using plot points scattered across the page. And there's a little more organization to it than that, which we'll cover in a minute while we actually walk through the process of how to use it for prep and note taking during a session. But the scatter plot method or mind mapping or whatever you want to call it is great for D&D players because it is visual. And maybe I'm wrong, but I assume that this game which relies so heavily on imagination draws people who tend to be visual learners. So instead of trying to write out everything that happens during a session, which you definitely can't do if you're the DM, or even a bulleted sequential list of events which players often try to do, this method is easy for anyone. And besides just appealing to visual learners, the scatterplot method is great because it is based on the tried and true practices from Sly Flourish's Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. I really stand by this book as an awesome resource for narrowing down the things that you really need to focus on when prepping for a session. It boils it down to just eight points. Review the characters, create a strong start, outline potential scenes, define secrets and clues, that's a big one, Develop fantastic locations, outline important NPCs, choose relevant monsters, and select magic item rewards. And from that, author Mike Shea even distills that list to three essential points. Creating a strong start, defining secrets and clues, and developing fantastic locations. And sorry Mike, but we're going to do things a little differently. I find that it is essential to start by reviewing the characters. The story is about them. So obviously our prep needs to focus on them and they should be the foundation of anything we're thinking about regarding the session. The next most important thing, which Mike Shea does weigh heavily on in this book, is defining those secrets and clues. Coming up with mysterious things either happening in the background or really just anything the characters don't know about that they might discover in this session. You're not planning for how they come across this information, just putting it on the page, reminding you that it's there, so if they do anything that might lead them to it, you can link them to that information. And the third point for me is kind of a mashup, but I call it outlining potential scenes because it still involves places and NPCs and monsters and really just the things that my characters are expected to do during that session. Really, this book definitely deserves its own video, so if you'd like to see one covering the return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, let's try to get this video to 200 likes in the first three days. Liking these videos is an easy way to help me and the channel and help more people find these videos. And so is subscribing. So if you're finding value in this one or any of the videos I've produced, hit the subscribe button to get them sent directly to your subscriptions tab every Wednesday. So as a dungeon master, I've been using this method for both my prep and note taking during the session. Here's what my scatter plot looked like before a recent session. My three PCs listed across the middle, secrets and scenes are all around them with important locations or names underlined or circled. 
I have some lines connecting things, but I recommend saving your line drawing for during the session, and there's a little box of NPC names down in the corner, just in case. And after the session, there are a lot more lines, more boxes around other things that I've hastily jotted down, and it kind of looks like a mess, but this session was a solid two hours of roleplay, I really only rolled a die once, and without any combat, the story did move a lot, so I had a lot to put down. And a little bonus tip for you DMs, if you do have a long note to take down, try to distract your players by just asking them, hey, how does your character feel about what just happened? Works every time. And a slight caveat to the scatterplot method is I then distill whatever I've scribbled onto this page into a Google Doc later. For each session, I write maybe five to 10 sentences, basically a small paragraph. And I definitely recommend doing this if you are a DM. This is what will actually keep track of your campaign in the long term. Players, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it will help you track the story thread that your DM is weaving. And yeah, I use Google Docs, which I know is not the best platform for this, so leave a comment below if you have any tips for myself or others about what tools you use to record your long-form notes. But from that scatterplot, I was able to write this short summary of my session in about 15 minutes, which is really important before preparing your next session scatterplot, which we're about to do together. Okay, and this is like my second time drawing with a new drawing tablet where I don't actually get to draw on the screen and oh man, yeah, this is kind of tricky, but here we go. I'm starting with my character's names in the middle. Serial, the drow ranger, played by my fiance Grace. Larillion, the <laughs> Eladrin sorcerer, played by my friend Dan. And we have Edgar, who's kind of a cool samurai. Okay, and one potential scene that's totally gonna happen next session is a full moon here in Lonelywood. This is my Icewind Dale campaign, by the way, if that wasn't clear, where the party is going to this ancient elven temple to activate a moon bow, kind of like a moon blade that Serial found there a few weeks ago. And while my characters are out of town, I'm going to have Ravison, the evil frost druid, lay siege to it, because she knows they stole this bow from the temple where she had been living. She knows they're gonna try to activate it on the full moon, and the cool thing is, it's kind of going to happen all off screen, assuming all of the characters go to that temple. So I don't even really have to worry about this, but it's a huge thing that's important to this session. And this attack, just in case it comes up, is going to be carried out by Ravison and, let's see, an awakened Sabertooth tiger? Sabertooth cat? That sounds pretty cool. Again, sorry if this is not making sense at all if you don't follow along with that campaign, but hopefully, as this starts to take shape, you're getting a sense of what's important to jot down on your scatterplot. And let's see, another sort of secret is that I really want Trex, who's a possessed kobold here in the town of Lonelywood, to die during this attack, so the ghost possessing him will jump to somebody new. And another really important secret, which I'm literally going to whisper because Grace is in the other room and I don't want her to know this, is that Berry Boy, the awakened shrub uh, created by Ravison, is freaking evil. I have been playing him as this cute little guy. He's making berries for them. It's all nice and good and yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, because the berries that he's been producing, the party is planning to turn into wine and it's gonna like kill a bunch of people in the town. So I just need to write this one down as something that I have to remember is an important thing going on in the background. And Axiom, who's a very important NPC, basically the long lost but now recovered princess of Edgar's people, is being trained by Edgar, so let's just draw a little line there. Oh, and she is also basically being possessed by Levistus, or or really just called by Levistus, so that's what we'll write down here, because she died out in the tundra, and that's where she was recovered from, and it, it's kind of a whole thing. Uh, but there's also a connection with our player character, Serial, because she has picked up one of these cursed amulets from a cultist of Levistus, and now her and Axiom are both being called to him to do, you know, who knows what, something with the Dwergar, so let's draw some dotted lines. And all in all, the, the full moon attack, Berry Boy being evil, and a few of the other things on here are really all Auril, the Frost Maiden herself, making moves. And one of the really important things that she's doing, directly connecting to one of my characters, Lorillion, who is a winter Aladrin with the Midwinter's Child Secret, is basically that she is going to revoke her blessing to him since they've now been really starting to act against her. 
the player is totally on board with this. Basically, he's going to make the switch to another deity and become a Summer Eladrin. And that was actually the player's idea. So always do a little bit of prep with your players between sessions as well. And adding a few other notes, I should add these NPC names later, but I'll get to it. And let's just circle our character names because again, they are the center of the story. So from our previous scatter plot, it took about 15 minutes to write a recap. And it took me about 15 minutes to make the one for my next session. But 30 minutes of prep, plus a few other details I have to work out, is really great. The scatter plot saves time, it keeps things visual, and it keeps us focused on the most important part of our game, the characters. Now remember to like and subscribe, and consider joining Patreon like Gobi, Pat, Marco, Ursai, Shania, Jordan, Liza, Eli, Todd, Ian, Brandon, Ted, Nick, Simon, Tom, Garrett, Darcy, Solva, Monica, and little Tim, because patrons get a bunch of extra content every month. But thank you all for your support, and keep building.